Who is the prophesied bride of Christ? The prophesied bride of Christ is somewhat of a mystery because she is not overtly described in the scriptures, yet clues of her obedience, devotion, and character can be found in every book of the Bible, revealed in types and shadows through the spirit of prophecy, a Hebrew Midrash perspective. It will take a born-again spirit, enlightened eyes, serious devotion, and a faithful life dedicated to Jesus Christ as Lord to discover who this Bride of Christ is personally. It will take loving the Lord with all of one's heart, mind, soul, and strength, and obedience to His commandments and statutes to become the prophesied Bride of Christ. Just as the parables are understood only by those with ears to hear spiritually, I believe the Bride of Christ is uniquely hidden in the scriptures for a reason, to discern the difference between the tried and true Bride and the make-believe ones. What does the bride's relationship to Christ look like? Well, we find part of this mystery in Ephesians chapter 5. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Well, this is a great mystery. But I, Paul, speak concerning Christ and the church. Well, this scripture parallels husbands loving their wives to Christ, the husband loving his bride, the church. Church here in Greek is ecclesia. Does this mean that all who go to church are the bride of Christ? More recent commentaries refer to ecclesia to mean being called to an assembly or gathering as in a church building. However, ecclesia holds a deeper meaning. Ecclesia is a called-out assembly under a different government. The true church is governed by the King of Kings, by His statutes, commandments, and spiritual law. This Ecclesia, called out of the world's kingdom, understands His kingly principles and earnestly seeks to abide by them and all that is written in His Word, the Bible. The purpose? Well, according to Ephesians 5, 26 through 27, that he, Jesus, our groom, might sanctify and cleanse Ecclesia, this called out woman, with the washing of water by the word. It's the washing of the word that cleanses his bride daily, enlightening her and keeping her heart and very being one with his, that he might present to himself a glorious church, a glorious bride, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So this great mystery is referring to the prophesied bride of Christ, who was bought with a bride price, making Jesus her Lord, owner of her. She willingly submits to his lordship and kingship and is thereby set apart from the world by his word to become glorious and holy. Some theologians say that there are different levels of intimacies, that the Bride of Christ is chosen because of her maturity, and that the immature will only be considered sons and daughters. To be honest, I don't know that answer. But if we define what a true believer is, we can at least determine for ourselves where our intimacy lies with our Lord. There are those who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, they even believe that he died on the cross to take away the sins of the world. But those same so-called believers may not really know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord, as owner of their lives, or as king who they choose to be governed by, let alone know him intimately as a bridegroom who paid their bride price. They are those who are hearers of the word only and not doers. They are onlookers, believing they have all the benefits of heaven and an abundant life because they said a prayer and made a confession with their lips. But sadly, their hearts are far from him. They don't believe in their hearts. Believe in Greek is pastuo. 
It means to commit unto, to commit to one's trust, to have faith in, to place confidence in. One cannot commit to one's trust without putting total faith and confidence in them and giving up their own lives. A true believer will commit to following the Lord's ways because they trust Him. Their actions will prove that they have confidence in Him because their submission and character will be evident of conforming to His image. In other words, they will be in the likeness of Jesus Christ. They are becoming one with Him, an intimacy that only the Bride of Christ could understand. As true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to put total trust in the One who bought us with a great price and have confidence in the owner of our soul by submitting to following in His ways while delighting in Him. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, We should examine ourselves to see if our faith is genuine. The Bride of Christ in her heart of hearts believes in Him, not merely that He just existed. She commits her being and life into His hands and places her confidence in Him because she knows Him by His Word. She reads His love letters, His written word daily, and is reminded of His covenant promises and the vow she has made to Him to be faithful and believe. She seeks to be faithful because she knows that her bridegroom paid her bride price with his very own blood. He laid down his life for her, so she desires to lay down her life for him. His faithfulness in this covenant relationship now clothes her with his garments of salvation, hiding the shame of her past. His robe covers her with righteousness as he continuously intercedes for her and answers her prayers. His Spirit comforts her as he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, wearing his crown and performing his head of the household priestly duties. Her life testimonies glorify his name and not hers as she faithfully practices walking in his glory and not in her own. We find a clue in John's Revelation chapter 21, whereas John envisions the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven filled with the glory of all true believers whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So you ask, what does this bride of Christ really look like? Well, the key is his glory will be revealed through this true bride. 2 Corinthians 3.18 reads, But we all, with open face, beholding as a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is written on this bride's face and in her being. Her character appears to look Christ-like as her love, devotion, and obedience to Him affords her to resemble His Spirit in the way of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. This bride is called the prophesied Bride of Christ because she was predestined to conform to the image of God's Son, who is Jesus Christ, according to Romans 8.29. And she is fulfilling the prophecy as she matures. Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he, God, predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. The word called in this passage is kaleo. It means to call one to approach or stand before one. Jesus is calling his ecclesia, this called out woman, to come and stand before him. But there is a standard and a requirement to stand before the Son of the living God. His bride, too, must be holy to withstand His presence face to face. So she checks herself daily to make sure she is dressed properly, acting and looking like what is pleasing to Him. She keeps her garments clean with the washing of daily devotions, being reminded of who He is and what He desires of her. She seeks his instructions in all things, for her utmost quest is to be one with him, not allowing anyone 
or anything to come in between them. So where do we find the bride of Christ? According to Psalm 91, the bride is hidden securely in the secret place of the Most High with her Prince of Peace and is spiritually seated with him in heavenly places, blessed with spiritual blessings according to Ephesians 1.3. She visits her Lord frequently in her prayer closet and converses with him, desiring to think like him, having the mind of Christ. So she strives to exalt whatsoever things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, as her testimonies speak of his power and his praise, giving him all the glory. With the help of his Holy Spirit, this chosen bride remains rooted and grounded in him who is the living word in all her ways. She is like a tree whose roots are grounded in living water, and whatever she puts her hand to indeed prospers putting all of her godly gifts to good use. She is more valuable than rubies. She is determined to run her race to the end to fulfill her high calling in Christ Jesus, obtaining crowns along the way to lay at his feet when they meet. So how do we become the prophesied bride of Christ? By desiring a close relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord more than anything or anyone on the face of this earth, willing to give our very own life to Him, and sincerely loving Him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul and strength. The true Bride of Christ believes not only in word but in deed, and practices righteousness, His ways, with everything she says and puts her hand to. This Bride's heart desire longs for Him more than anyone or anything. She ponders over his love letters, his written word, and learns what pleases him. In him she lives, moves, and has her being. This bride is a praise unto him because she is becoming one with him. The great news is his bride's righteousness will shine his glory like the noonday sun in these last days. Isaiah 61 11 says, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden caused the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations through his prophesied bride of Christ. The righteousness that is found in those who have surrendered their lives into his ways to obtain his glorious salvation will spring forth these true believers will be noticed because they are showing forth His glory and not their own. Their very life is a praise unto the Lord. These are those who are the prophesied bride of Christ, whose praise will spring forth to the nations. Thank you for listening. This is Cindy Hartline from Love for the Truth podcast. Until next time, big hugs.